It lay in a region that President Thomas Jefferson had bought from the French in 1803 as part of the Louisiana Purchase. Back then, no one in Washington even knew what was out here, or in much of the rest of the land beyond it to the west, right up to the Pacific Ocean. So Jefferson sent a corps of explorers under the command of Meriwether Lewis and William Clark to travel up the Missouri River to find out. Their mission was to survey and map the vast wilderness along the river's banks and to find a new route to the Pacific Ocean. It wasn't an easy trip from the start. A replica of the keelboat they used is now on display here in the North Dakota capital of Bismarck. When there was wind, they sailed the boat upriver against the Missouri's currents. When the wind died, they had to use paddles and poles to push the boat up the river or get out and pull it along the shore using ropes. In late August, they arrived in the region that would later become the Dakota Territory. But they weren't always welcomed. On September 24, 1804, they made camp here at the confluence of the Missouri and Bad Rivers on land that belonged to a Native American tribe called the Sioux. For the first few days, the tribe seemed friendly enough but when the explorers refused to pay a toll for crossing their land, the Sioux tried to seize their supplies. Both sides drew their weapons, and when neither backed down, the standoff threatened to explode into bloodshed. Finally, Chief Black Buffalo ordered his men to let Lewis and Clark move on. But after four more weeks of arduous travel, the harsh Dakota winter brought their progress to a halt. They chose a spot near a string of native villages to wait the winter out. Today, the site of those villages can still be spotted from the air. These round patterns in the earth are actually the foundations of homes once built by members of the Hidatsa, Mandan, and Arikara tribes. On top, they used earth and grass to create snug earth lodges like these that have been reconstructed here at the Knife River Indian Village's National Historic Site. To wait out the coming winter, Lewis and Clark built a temporary home of their own, a triangle-shaped stockade that they named Fort Mandan. Today, this reconstruction shows what it probably looked like. But they found more than shelter while living within the fort's walls. They also found two valuable new recruits for their team, a French trapper named Toussaint Charbonneau and his Shoshone wife, Sacagawea. The couple helped Lewis and Clark to communicate with the Indians nearby. First, English was translated into French. Then the French was translated into one of the Indian languages. And then that was all done in reverse. When spring finally arrived and the explorers continued on up the Missouri River, Charbonneau and Sacagawea joined them as translators and guides. Sacagawea, with her baby strapped to her back, would go on to play an essential role in the expedition's success and to win fame as the most admired Native American woman since Pocahontas. Oh. 